This episode proudly brought to you by Conqueror Northgate, the Conqueror Midran. Welcome to another exciting episode. I'm here with my beautiful daughter Tori. Hi. Hey, and Tor, tell them where are we going tomorrow? We're going to Swaziland. We have lots to pack. Tell them how much have we got to pack, Tor. Billions. 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 <laughs> Right, welcome to another exciting 4x4 Ventures episode. Morning of day three and welcome. Ah, sure, what a day, what an absolute day. This is uh, the evening before we go to a new place, Mozambique. Like I've never been. What's really awesome about this episode is that it's our first time going to Mozambique, number one. And number two is I get to do it with my family. So this should be awesome. So traveling to Mozambique would mean for us driving and staying over at Mabuda Farm in Swaziland. We left Johannesburg for ways at 11 a.m., a bit late I know, but as it was tar road all the way through, or so we thought, I wasn't expecting too much drama. Our route followed the N12 towards Emakakheni in an easterly direction, as though we were heading towards Nelspruit. We turned right onto the R33 and had a simple drive up the hilly pass towards the Ushuk border post. This part of the trip should take three hours to do, traveling at 100 kilometers an hour. We weren't in a rush. Entering the beautiful country of Swaziland with no issues at the border post, we had a two hour trip to the hills of Seteki on the easterly side of Swaziland. We arrived at Mabuda farm late that evening. Total kilometers traveled on day one was 487 kilometers and it took us about six hours and 30 to do. Entering Mozambique, we traveled down into the Lowfeld and with the total trip from Seteki to Ponte de Ora being 180 kilometers, we were very excited and somewhat anxious. The ring road on Google Maps is a dirt road that shaved off 50 minutes from our trip, but I would advise anyone to stick to the main tar roads, especially if the area has had rain, the road could be a challenge. Arriving at Ponte de Ora just before 12 a.m., we headed to Gala Gala campsites, where we would be staying for the next six days. Two hours in and haven't really made any headway. Um, something to remember when camping, the more fridges the better and i'll tell you why the one option or the one fridge offers food uh, butter and milk storage maybe with some perishables and the other fridge always a good idea to just keep your um, drinks cool drinks waters uh, maybe a couple of beers or two in the other fridge so thank you to edward bath from edward bath overlanding he's lent me his national luna 62 liter we have it here on the easy on buddy drop down fridge slide system Uh, really nice things with the Conqueror Compact Platinum 2 trailer is just how much storage space there is. I mean, I don't think we've ever, ever, ever been able to fill up all the little pouches and everything that comes with it. Then again, we've never really done a trip that's been, what's it now, 15 days? 15 day camping trip. Um, when we're at Nguenya, I think we're going to park the trailer up because we're staying in the lodge section of Nguenya. But with the Swaziland, Mozambique and the Marloth Park section of this trip, it's full on um, camping with the trailer. You just excuse the flashing light. Something else I need to point out to you. When doing an overland trip, just make sure you've got all the right stickers for you, both your trailer and your vehicle. So when, with regards to Mozambique, you need a Z ZA sticker on the back of your trailer and you need a yellow triangle in a blue square. You also need on the front driver's side of the vehicle, you need a also a yellow triangle with a blue square on the front driver's side of the vehicle. Something to point out when driving through to Botswana or to Mozambique, get a sticker from Drive Moz or Drive Bot. We have the circular Drive Moz sticker 
on the driver's side side mirror it's just always nice to know that if you do run into trouble you can rely on a group of people that know what to do and can assist you if you do run into the scenarios Right, how's it guys? So, um, I'm here at Manzini. I've just pulled into Taito. I'm joined with uh, Chedrek Sakamuzi. We've just come down... Malakwane. Malakwane, yo. From um, Ushuk Border Post. Drive carefully. Drive carefully. When you're in Swaziland, drive carefully. People are nice and friendly. For those of you, just be careful when driving with a lot of weight at the, at the back of the vehicle. Be careful with your brakes. Morning, so... Day two of our trip and we arrived here at Mabuda Farm in Sateki, Swaziland last night. It was a long, long, long drive. I have no idea where we are or what Mabuda Farm is like. Let's go and have a look see what it's all about. Ponta de Oro is a town in the extreme south of Mozambique, a seven hour drive from Johannesburg, excluding stops and border controls. This was a destination we had heard so much about and a place we had to visit. The town is known for its beach diving and dolphin tours, not to forget deep sea fishing. However, for my tribe and I, we look to it as a destination to come together and enjoy quality time. Explore the town and see what Ponta de Oro itself had to offer. currency in Mozambique is the Metical and the exchange rate when using Rand at the time of our family adventure was 1 Rand to 4 Metical. Shop vendors do take dollars and Rands but be sure to have a calculator at hand. The people are friendly, welcoming and the atmosphere is something simple and relaxed. 
We never felt threatened, but coming from South Africa, we remain guarded at times and always vigilant over the little ones. I found a simple no and yes thank you was enough to persuade some of the toughest hawkers and street vendors. Hey, how's it guys? Okay, cool. So I'm just trying to creep into picture here. We went to Ponte de Ora, the fish market, and we got some beautiful king size prawns. We've just obviously cleaned them up, taken out the middle um, gut line, and we're gonna do them in tin foil on the braai. Um, for those of you internationally based, braai stands for barbecue. So the plan is to just open them up on the, on the side that they are butterflied. Hey, big and juicy, I tell you. And really affordable, I might add. So what we're gonna do is just drizzle some of this awesome spice on. Not all of it, just some of it. And we're gonna put a little bit of lemon on. Wrap them up in tin foil, put a bit of garlic. Some garlic flakes. And then cook them on top when the coals are ready. Cook them up on top of the brine for barbecue. Bit of pepper, keeping it simple. And I'll drizzle a bit of lemon, lemon over the top. seafood just keep it simple absolutely simple no need for white wine or any of that nonsense although it's not a bad thing what I also like to do is um, I actually like to cook it with the lemon pith inside the tin foil just to get those juices to permeate into the prawns and that's a word I haven't used in a while. We're doing, we, we are doing a slow cook. little sausages we're good to go Gala Gala is a fantastic place for the kids and family vibe it has nine private campsites with ablutional facilities to suit there are electrical points and wash-up areas as well per campsite camps are maintained daily and with a pool nearby it was easy days and such a pleasure Gala Gala Eco Resort is where we camped for the first leg of our trip. The Conqueror Companion became a home away from home. This little trailer packs such a punch when it comes to features and comfort. Reach out to Conqueror Northgate and Conqueror Midrand if you'd like to find out more.
If you do go to Ponta, rent a quad bike. It is a bit pricey, but what a way to explore the area. Where does the time go is the question I asked myself before we had to pack up and leave for Nguenya Lodge. Close to the Crocodile Bridge Gate, Kruger National Park, South Africa. We head for Maputo and then over the newly completed and insanely impressive Katembe Bridge. It is the longest suspension bridge cross sea in Mozambique, spanning an impressive three kilometers. Thank you to all of our subscribers. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Would love to hear from you. Stay safe, keep trucking, and we'll see you out there. Cheers. Stay tuned for our next episode as we get some R&R &R at Nguenya Lodge, do a bit of wildlife and bird watching, and then travel close to Jackalberry Lodge. We go wild.